Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Maverick in the place again. Question. You remember a couple of videos ago? Maybe a couple of weeks ago. Maybe a month ago. Sometime ago. Write us upon this channel here. Yeah. We did load up a video. Post up a video. That where I was making the case that it is arguable that Jamaica's best individual event in athletics are the sprint hurdles. You remember me that make a case eh? I mean I go across both male and female and go at all levels, junior and senior. When you look at the depth and quality and the elite level performances, the world champions and Olympic champions over the sprint hurdles, both men and women, me not try to make the case said it is arguably you know, that right now, concurrently, the sprint hurdles are Jamaica's best track event. You might have been there. But if you never see the video there, that has the synopsis. I want me to argue. I mean, I break it down in more details and give some of the names of the people man, and all of that. See, but generally, you know, if you go across, uh, if you go over the, the women's side, uh, Brittany Anderson, she's a current world championship silver medalist. Yeah, we all young hurdlers coming to you. Go up, go, go, down, go down the junior ranks. The girl named Karika Hill, she's a world under 20 champion. And the list goes on and on and on. You know, we don't have the time to mention all of them. No, car. we didn't run it down in another video. Then. But one name I don't think I mentioned in you know, that video was a bridge named Rashid Broadbell. Young hurdler, 22 years old. An interesting journey. I think it was a St. Diego hurdler back in you know, the champ, you know, champs days. Right? And he started his professional career at MVP. Well, he was at MVP. You remember leading into those trials for the Tokyo Olympics, Broadbell had a, he was he started the, the season like a house on fire, but him get a little injury and you know he kind of set him back during the season. The trials came up now and look like there was some contention as to whether or not he was a hundred percent fit for trials, and because he was the leading Jamaican hurdler at the time, the decision was made to seek a medical exemption. So that they would have missed the trials and probably still try to make the team. But as things unfolded, the people ever qualify were evidently qualified to go represent Jamaica. And as a result, Brad Bell never get for, for, for be a member of the Olympic team. But you know, so my information is that due to that particular incident, because all of those decisions were taken while he was at MVP. Me say I do to that now he, he, he cut from MVP. So this is another success story of an athlete, Mark Kim never attained elite level success at MVP, you know. But he's left MVP subsequently, and is now an elite hurdler. The man got 12 19. The man is a Commonwealth champion, you know. He won the Commonwealth gold medals, and he just can't do the Commonwealth Games, and he come back after the Commonwealth Games, and he beat the current world champion, not once, but twice. This is Grant Alloway from Upper America. He also beat Anson Parchment, Parchment, the current Olympic champion as well. Seeing that the man a fly, the man guarding the elite status, 12999 BB. He just run that about two weeks ago. Yeah. So this Utah is an elite level sprint hurdler at 22 years old. I mean, I said, this now adds to that growing the narrative we made put forward to, to say, the, sprint, the depth and quality in our sprint hurdles, both men and women, seniors and juniors, this event is arguably Jamaica's strongest event. Broadway look like him have a bright future. He's a menacing performer. Two times when beat Grant Alloway, he run on from half the pace and put Alloway under pressure. And Alloway swim and dive and lose him farm and, and lose the race there. So when, I remember when he beat Grant Alloway the first time, you know, me and a man argue about it, you know. Right, I mean, I tell the man, say, boy, I mean, I know, I feel like Alloway gave the race. But the man come back again, and almost the same thing happened, and he beat Alloway again. The same man called me back, before the man crossed the line, me get a call from a bridge, and say, you see it? See the man beat the man again, the man had the real deal. Yeah, the man had the real deal. <laughs> yeah, you see, I said to you. Yeah, man, so we just want to say, for the people who don't know who Rashid Broadbell is, yeah, man, the new kid on the block. You know, the sprint hurdles. Yeah. Big, tall, strong hurdler. Yeah. Full of power and speed. Brilliant hurdling technique, too, you know. Yeah, man, the man attack the hurdles aggressively. You know, that aggressive attack by the hurdles. Them there. Yeah, I aim that. You have a couple of international events coming up back to back. Now you have World Championship 6 here again. Unfortunately, 
you will miss out on the one the other day. But you don't know the world champions will come up next year again and the Olympics coming up shortly after that again. So look out for Rashid Broadbell. You can imagine the Jamaica trials in other spring turns there. Yeah, with Broadbell and if Levy come back and if Omar McLeod come back and if Anse Parchment get back soon. Yeah? Not normal, you know. I tell you about the wanted hurdles. I tell you about the sprint hurdles, you know. Not an armor sprint. But say we have Megan Tapa who is the reigning Olympic bronze medalist, you know. You know the women's sprint hurdles, you know. Me like it. And if you go around the juniors, some bad junior around there. That girl away that carry her in, she just gone pro at class two. She just left class two. She don't run class one yet. But she gone pro. So this event here, yeah, argue me and argue it. See our best individual event right now in a track and fit. Because if you take Shelly and Sherry out of one and two, that a women's, but go around the men's hundred one and two and where you see around it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, good, it's a good look. So all the people who don't know Rashid Bradbell, Rashid Bradbell, that look out for him. Look out for him. And importantly and instructively, see where you want, put it up as a poster. It shows that it's not the monopoly, it's the duopoly of MVP and racers is being officially challenged and broken down. Because Bradbell is another athlete who leave MVP and looking even better attaining some heights we've never attained while he was at MVP. Big up the man with them called journalist still. For them calling that thing on my boss, a champion, that are the coach up on up the elite performance track club there. That are the same track club. It's the same coach, coach Chelly and Fraser Price, coach Brad Bell. You know. That are the same elite, elite group, we call it. Yeah, and there's some Brad Bell there. Left front of and gone up a broad bed. And for those who don't know, Mr. Walcott, who run the elite club, was one of the students of an MVP one time in terms of his understudy. And one time, one time coach him up there, one time assistant coach him up there. So one circle, you know, one link, you know. See, so we are saying, big up Rashid Broadbent. Yeah, you understand me? You're doing it well, my boss. And of course, it, this, your emergence now adding to the reputation or the notion or the theory of the Maverick that the sprint hurdles at Jamaica biggest and best event in track and field right now. What do you feel like? What do you think about everything? <laughs> me not tear down nothing. Eh? Me have to be careful every time now. People say me not tear down, you know. Me not tear down nobody. <laughs> yes, so yes, me not tear down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, YouTube, yes. I tell you what I think about everything. See? <laughs>